Hello! In this video, I'll be explaining my point of view about the World of Tanks situation as well as providing some potential solutions. This video is a direct reply to Skill's 6 reasons why not to pay for this game. Make sure to watch this video and drop a like before watching this video. Artillery, EBRs, and unfair games. These were the ingredients chosen to create the worst gaming experience, but Wargaming accidentally added an extra ingredient. Come. Let's get right into it. First, I will discuss the proposed changes to premium ammunition. One idea is to adjust premium ammo so that it does less damage than standard ammo. In my humble opinion, this is a terrible idea, and let me explain to you why. Suppose a Super Conqueror meets a Type 5 Heavy Enjoyer head-on. S Conk has 2400 health, Type 5 Heavy has 2900 health. The strengths of the S Conk is DPM and gun handling, whereas the Type 5 has armor and health. It will take the S Conk 66.7 seconds to kill a Type 5 from full, and it will take the Type 5 65.6 seconds to kill the S Conk, assuming each penetrate their shots. I'd say this is an equal fight, except an S Conk can't pen a Type 5 anywhere without shooting premium ammo. So only by firing premium ammo can the S Conk fight back at Type 5. So why would you lower the damage on the premium ammo? Suppose instead of 400 damage, the S Conk's premium APCR does 320. Well, now the S Conk is going to take 1 minute and 23 seconds to kill a Type 5. Do you understand my point? This was made extremely clear in Steel Hunter. The Harlequin has very bad penetration with this machine gun. If you had to fight a Valkyrie, not only would it be forced to fire the higher pen rounds to go through it, but it would do less damage. It already has to penetrate three entire clips to kill a Valkyrie, but now loading premium ammo takes exactly four clips. And if you bounce a single shot, or the average damage of the clip combined low rolls, you now need five clips. Meanwhile, fat fuck over here is healing up, and if he has the big gun, he kills you in two shots, because he doesn't need to fire the higher pen, lower damage ammo. But Kims, you should outflank it. It doesn't matter. The Valkyrie can just back his ass to a corner, and you're doomed, because your premium heat rounds aren't going through his spaced armor. Meanwhile, the Raven completely bodies the Valkyrie, because its standard ammo has the same penetration as the Valkyrie's premium ammo. Now what about tanks that desperately need premium ammo to be competitive? Do you expect the T-69 to clap foes with 181mm of pen? It needs 250 heat rounds to compete. Shame, because now it's going to do 180 damage instead of 240. God forbid, a lower tier has to fight a higher tier. Imagine your poor M6 trying to fight an Object 252U. Not only is he forced to fire his premium ammo to actually hurt the damn thing, but now he does less damage. I get it. Nobody wants to spend 5 minutes bouncing the cheeks of an E100, and nobody wants to roll up in their E100 just to get eaten alive by some Russian medium with heat. So, what's the solution? Do you guys remember the old VK4502B? Before Wargaming streamlined it into another side-scraping shitter. Let's take a look. Old VK, an absolute beast, look at that. Its specialty was having a strong lower plate. Well, I'm a shitlord noob, so I'm gonna load the gold. Hmm, it didn't really make much of a difference. Crap. Now I need to learn the weak spots of the tank. Oh look, it has a machine gun port, cupola, and turret ring that can be penetrated with standard rounds. I can use my knowledge of the game to penetrate him. Fast forward to modern VK. Damn. No machine gun port, no turret ring, and a smaller cupola. But oh look, the lower plate is weaker now. Except, I still can't penetrate it with standard ammo. What if I load gold? Well, <laughs> fuck me sideways. I could pen it, but only if I load gold. What? What I'm suggesting is that gold ammo should be nerfed to a lower value. Perhaps 10 to 15% higher than standard ammo and give us back tanks with weak spots. Take the object 430. 238 with standard, 270 with gold. You can load the gold in the 430, but it's comparable to standard, so it's debatable how much of an advantage you'll receive. Now look at the T-54. 
203 with standard. 330 with gold. Jesus, why bother firing standard, am I right? But how did this even come to be? Why did Wargaming decide to implement tanks without weak spots? Well, it's all because of that bastard armor penetration indicator. Do you all remember when it only showed raw armor values? Meaning, if you aimed at a mouse's upper plate with a gun that has 267 pen, it will appear green. But even if you min roll, you still have above 200 millimeters of penetration. But you knew you wouldn't pen the mouse's upper plate because its effective armor is actually much stronger than 200. So, although it appears green, you still had to rely on your knowledge of armor to estimate if you'll be able to penetrate him. Well, <laughs> not anymore. Now the armor penetrator shows effective armor. Who needs to learn about tank weak spots when you could just load gold ammo and wiggle your mouse around until you find a green spot? Suddenly, everybody could penetrate an E5's lower plate because they wiggled their mouse until they found a green spot. Another bonus issue is that the fact that if you want to aim at a weak spot from a distance, you will most likely miss because of World of Tanks RNG accuracy mechanic. So you're basically compelled to load gold to counteract the bad accuracy. Don't get me wrong, the accuracy mechanic is to prevent heavy tanks from camping in the back while everyone snipes, and so that the FV4005 can't snipe capolas. Shouldn't aim time be enough of a balancing factor? If a 4005 wants to spend 10 seconds aiming at your Capola, that's plenty of time for you to hide, wiggle your tank, or return fire. If an FV4005 wants to fire early, well, that's also fine. He won't hit your weak spot, but that's the price he pays for having such a large caliber gun. Additionally, because of its slow shell velocity, it would make it extremely hard for him to land a perfect weak spot snipe. Russian mediums can still fire on the move, but they won't be hitting your weak spots. There is nothing more infuriating than having a losing team in your tank destroyer and continuously missing your shots because RNG said no. <coughs> See you at 30 p.m. <coughs> it should be a trade between accuracy and how long you are willing to wait. If some shitlord low driver is sitting in the open, not moving at all, why do I miss half my shots on its lower plate? In my version of the accuracy mechanic, you would hit the low because you took extra long to aim at the low to make sure it hits. If the low is moving backwards and forwards, your tank should bloom ever so slightly so you're not perfectly accurate because the low driver is making an effort to use his armor. Although I agree light tanks should be limited to three per team, I'm not sure putting an equal amount of EBRs on both teams will solve the issue. I think it's a step in the right direction, but it won't fix much. Why you may ask? Well, how many times have you loaded into a game and some shitlord EBR on your team dies in the first minute while the enemy manticore is left to spot your entire team? It didn't matter that the EBR is overpowered and the manticore is hot garbage. Your team doesn't have eyes and the enemy does. It's all because of one bad player and the other team's player is not bad. So what's the solution? Well, I'll discuss this later in the video as it has bigger implications, but let's start with the basics. Why does the EBR have tires made from stellinium? My shot always bounces. It doesn't. You missed the hull and the shell either went under the tank or to the side, only hitting the wheels. There are two solutions to this problem. Like Skill said, make the wheels part of the hitbox, meaning every time you miss the hull and do zero damage, instead you will do full damage. Or consider the following. You should receive assistance damage for destroying an EBR's wheels, and your team falls it up by damaging the slowered EBR. How many times have you missed the tank's hull and only took its tracks off, and said, god damn it, zero damage, only to have your team nuke it? for like minus a thousand damage and you're like oh okay i'll take that a thousand assist currently you damage an ebr's wheel and it gets nothing from it 
Why can't I get assistance damage for slowing down the EBR? It was my shot that slowed him down that caused him to die to my team. But let's take a step back. How about hitting the damn thing? You know, it's easy if you have 20 milliseconds ping and 1500 shell velocity, but what happens if you have 900 meters per second shell velocity and you play on 200 ping? Better yet, you have a potato PC that can only run the game at 30 FPS. Well, you're screwed. Although there is a lag compensation mechanic in the game, you may have noticed that sometimes your shot looks like it missed, but you still did damage. That's because World of Tanks calculates if you would have hit the enemy had you not had high ping. If you fired your gun, but in that 200 milliseconds of lag the enemy moved, the game checks, would that shot have hit 200 milliseconds ago? If the answer is yes, then you damage him. My question is, is this enough? If any of you have bad internet or a potato PC, let me know in the comments of this video. I know it's not enough for me personally. My internet suffers from its upload speed, not the ping, meaning my inputs are delayed as it takes a long time for my client to tell wargaming servers that I fired. This issue cannot be fixed without allowing for illegal mods to take advantage of it. That's why in some of my videos, my gun fires but the shell comes out much later. My client knows that I fired, but wargaming servers don't know until much later. Good luck hitting EBRs with an inconsistent delay when firing. Oh no, RT. What? Like Skills said, remove artillery missions. According to this poll I made, 57% of people who play artillery only play it to complete campaign missions. This isn't going to work though. I can't tell you how many people I've seen who have 5,000 plus games in a single artillery. My solution is to limit one artillery per battle. I don't care if you can't get a Pascucci's medal anymore. I don't care if artillery has longer queue times. No one gives a shit about medals, unless they're the Kalibanovs. And if 57% of people stop playing artillery, the queue times won't increase that much anyway. Also, if it was up to me, I would just flat out remove the stun mechanic. Seriously, there isn't a single multiplayer game where a stun mechanic is liked by the community. It was actually extremely difficult for me to locate the exact cause of unequal games. This is because there isn't an exact cause for a game which ends with a 15-4 score. Instead, it's a conglomerate of skill imbalance, power creep tanks, light tanks, map design, and team RNG. In the order of most prominent to least prominent. Let's start with the smallest contribution to unequal games. Team RNG. This is the statistical theory that, given enough games, one team will experience worse RNG than another. This is not rigged matchmaking, but a product of statistics itself. Think about a coin toss. There is a 50-50 chance that the coin will land on heads or tails. But you know that it is statistically possible to get five heads in a row. My point is, given enough games, there is a chance that one team gets all heads and the other team gets all tails. Think of it this way. Two E100s are fighting each other, each with the 15 centimeter gun and gold ammo. They have a 50% chance of penning each other's turret. Each fire three shots at each other. One could penetrate all three, and the other could bounce all three. There is a 12.5% chance of this happening, quite low until you realize this will happen to the E100 drivers every eight games. The odds are much worse when one E100 chooses to fire standard rounds only. Now, the lucky 100 gets to continue fighting the flank on full health, whereas the unlucky 100 has to fall back and hide because he lost 2,250 health. It all takes this small interaction for one team to gain the upper hand, and then a cascade effect takes place where your whole team gets wiped out. This you, goes back to the idea that tanks should be less dependent on gold rounds, but also I personally don't think plus or minus 25% RNG on shell penetration is a good idea. Don't get me wrong, I think plus or minus 25% on damage is great, it makes the fight more dynamic, but plus or minus 25% on penetration just allows people to bounce shots they shouldn't and penetrate shots they shouldn't. I think a 10-15% to roll on the penetration should be enough 
if any at all. The, the original. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about unbalanced maps, as Skill has already touched on it. I'm going to talk about map design itself. A lot of maps in World of Tanks follow the same doctrine. The side you can push and the side you can't push, followed by a corridor layout to force frontal engagements and promote gold ammo usage. Take Murovanka, for example. The west side is not usually pushed and will have all your heavies and tank destroyers camping, whereas the east side can relatively easily be pushed. One side breaks through. Unless your team is ready to defend and have positioned themselves to counter the push, you lose. Studzanki is also quite prone to this. You have the train station, consisting predominantly of heavies, that will sit for a very long time, while the small town gets pushed by one team. Now, I must be clear, I'm not telling you this happens every game. I'm only telling you the process that leads to a 15-4 or 15-2 defeat. You can have close games on either map where the game doesn't involve in the way mentioned above. What I'm saying is that Games that end in a 15-4 usually are the result of the process I mentioned earlier. I already discussed the problems with light tanks, but I'll quickly summarize it again. When there is a skill imbalance between the two teams' lights, one team gains a massive advantage. Now, another problem I've noticed is the increasing power of all tanks being added to the game. I mean, put it this way, we all know the Progetto 46 is extremely strong, maybe even overpowered, but it doesn't evoke any outrage. Now, imagine if the Progetto 46 was implemented in 2014, where all it had to fight were Pershings and Panther 2s. Can you imagine the outrage it would invoke? People said that Type 59 was overpowered when it was first released. Granted, it got nerfed, but look at it nowadays. It got buffed, and it still gets outclassed by many new mediums. In 2016, the IS-7, T-125, and Object-140 were Clown Wars meta, and before that it was the Bat Chat, 25T. Now, it's Chieftains and Ninos. Don't get me wrong, players who work hard should be granted a good reward. Nobody wants to play the Chieftain, and nobody finds it fun to play. Trust me, no one wants to play their Chieftains in pubs. I will touch on this subject later. Now, the real solution to unequal games problem is player skill imbalance. The random queue needs skill-based matchmaking. This is not to be confused with ranked battles. Ranked Battles is a mode where all players of similar skill fight each other. This is not what I'm referring to. What I'm proposing is a system where player skill is distributed equally on both teams. For example, currently, there's nothing stopping the matchmaker from putting 15 red players on one side and 15 green players on another. What I want to see is the matchmaker distribute the shitters and the tryhards equally. 8 reds, 7 greens on one team? and 7 reds, 8 greens on another. Preferably the same tier, but it doesn't have to. And it doesn't have to be the exact either. To make it easier on the matchmaker, 6,000 personal rating player, which will now be referred to as PR, could match with a 7,000 PR player. Or better yet, make it a total team PR, where one team's PR is summed up. Let's say 15 players multiply by 5,000 PR equals 75,000 team PR. Now, the matchmaker could get 8 4,000 PR players and 7 6,000 PR players on the other team. You should exclude light tanks from the calculation and make it so that they have their own light tank total PR and are always equally matched to fix the light tank problem. You were never one of us. You were nothing but a stat patter. A false unicum. My eyes have been opened. Let me help you to see, Shitter. 
this concludes the section on unequal games, I will now discuss the problem with Clan Wars reward tanks. They are too good. Wargaming seems to think that the only way a reward can be good if it's overpowered. Or at least extremely good. Like the T95 FE4201 Chieftain. Or the Object 279 Early. Let me propose two ideas. First, nerf Clan Wars reward tanks, but make them earn more credits like a tier 8 premium. Think about it. If a tier 8 premium makes an additional 50% credits, perhaps a tier 10 Clan Wars reward tank could make an additional 60 or 75. But I get it. We don't want the matchmaker flooded with people in tier 10 tanks grinding credits. And we don't want more credits into the game. Wargaming clearly wants to sink everybody's credits. So consider my second idea. Make reward tanks fun. I don't understand why Wargaming doesn't nerf overpowered Clan Wars reward tanks. I understand why they don't nerf premium tanks. Nobody will buy a good premium knowing that it could be nerfed in the future. Perhaps they think people won't participate in Clan Wars if they know the reward tank could be nerfed. To that I say, no. Believe me, as a person who has played Clan Wars since 2016, I can guarantee that no one who plays Clan Wars enjoys the Chieftain meta. It was a real fucking reality check when the only way the Virgin Give Up clan could beat the Chad Maho clan in a big boy tournament was when they brought a full 15 Chieftain lineup. 15 Chieftains. This is how you win Clan Wars now, apparently. Do you have any idea how fucking stale and boring the Chieftain meta is? I'm getting so sick and tired of new tanks with impenetrable turrets and 50 fucking degrees of gun depression getting added into the game. Why does Wargaming want the game to be a ridgeline warrior fest? I don't know. Please nerf the fucking Chieftain. I don't even care about the 279e. The only thing the 279e has is frontal armor. The Chieftain has everything. Wargaming, if you are afraid of people not participating in clan wars because you nerf reward tanks, don't worry. As soon as anyone gets a chieftain, they quit playing clan wars anyway. Why would you even continue? Everything else is worthless compared to the chieftain. Oh, but you know this. You remove the chieftain from the list of reward tanks you can get in the Renaissance campaign. Great idea. Now only veteran rule of tanks players can compete in clan wars, and any new players can go fuck themselves in their object 277. I have asked many people in Clan Wars, and they all agree that Clan Wars should be tech tree tanks only, just like in Ranked. This is all because Wargaming feels that Clan Wars reward tanks should be completely busted, but they don't have to be. They can be fun instead. So what makes a tank fun, you ask? Well, let's look at the MT-25's guns. Shit, okay, okay. Now let me show you the old MT-25 from patch 9.17. Oh, what's this? 37mm automatic. 1200 clip potential. Its penetration was horrendous, but who cares? It was a garbage gun, but it didn't stop people from trying to make it work. The thought of clipping a tier 7 tank destroyer from full drove us to try to make it work, no matter how bad it was. It made the tank fun, blasting this little AK-47. What about another tank that is fun? The AMX 1357. <laughs> You've all been scammed into thinking that tank is fun with its 8 shots that do 90 damage and 1 second interclip reload. Imagine if it had 4 shots, 180 damage, and 2 second interclip reload. It would be identical firepower, but it, it would be boring. Imagine if the AMX 13105 was instead a AMX 1385. 6 shots, 180 damage, 1 second interclip reload. That would be fun. It would have roughly the same firepower as the current AMX 13105, but instead the AMX 13105 is stuck being a weaker bat chat 25T. Imagine if the MPT-70 was a Clan Wars reward tank, same gun as the Sheridan. Or put the actual 279 into the game. Sure, they'll make the whole armor overpowered, but how about giving it the actual cupola it had in real life? and making its traverse speed horrible because of its four tracks. Hell, let it have its autoloader that it had in real life, and make it as shitty and bad as the Rhinoceronte. You have a tank that's basically a KV-5, 
but with a shitty autoloader. Who cares if it's not that competitive? It'll be fun to play. Or, get this, put the Waffentrager Elf E100 back into the game, but give it three shots, a four-second interclip, and a 28-second clip reload, and keep everything else the same. It will basically have the same firepower as a Char Future 4, except it'll have a higher 2800 DPM. There are so many ways Wargaming can reward fun tanks instead of overpowered ones. I'm not sure why they don't do it. The removal of team damage and all chat has to be one of the worst changes Wargaming has made in a very long time. No longer are you allowed to fight back when one of your teammates is pushing you around. Is one of your teammates continuously blocking your shot and pushing you around? Plant one into the back of his turret. I know it's wrong, but that is how people let out their anger. The worst thing was the combined removal of all chat and the increased chat bans. Apparently, it doesn't matter you can censor in-game swears if you're still not allowed to swear. People swear when they are angry to blow off some steam. Instead, you force people to keep it all in and bring it in to the next battle, where it all piles up until you rage quit. Back in the day, you could say, FUCK OFF SHITTER ARTY! And then the enemy ARTY could reply LOL. Or Nowadays, you have to say, I'm not particularly fond of artillery, while you rage internally. And, you know, God forbid you let out your anger, or else Wargaming will chat ban you for saying smelly poo-poos. I don't care if one in every 100 games someone on your team tells the enemy where you are. Because a simple fix would to be to chat ban those people. It's the classic 5% of the population that ruins it for the 100%. We want to chat. We want team damage. Our friendly artillery should be punished for stunning you. You could lose an engagement because your ally artillery stunned you and received no penalty. Even if they turn blue, you're still dead. Getting hit by an ally is frustrating, but nowhere near as frustrating as not being able to fight back some jackass who's pushing you. Sure, you can send in a ticket. Maybe they will get banned for three days. That's not going to revive your tank. You're a man who knows how to get things done. That's why Stefedra helps you rise to the occasion. Okay, I've just given you a lot of information to take in. But wait, there's more. What I'm about to suggest should be taken with a grain of salt because it's really out there. Everything I could discuss could be fixed. We could implement the new matchmaker and all that, and it may or may not fix the problem. So what if we attack the problem head on instead of trying to nerf this or change that? We give the losing team the advantage. What do I mean by this? Well, perhaps the game could recognize when a team is losing severely like when one team is down 7 tanks or down 5,000 HP. At first I thought, what if the team that is losing by a significant margin gains some sort of RNG advantage, where their shots are less likely to miss, they're more likely to penetrate their shots, etc. But I thought RNG should not be the answer. So then I thought, what if a team that is losing and is down, let's say, 5,000 HP, gets to respawn their tanks so that the HP loss isn't as significant? and the losing team stands a chance of fighting back. But I quickly realized that people will just spawn camp and you know, end up farming more damage. Then I thought, what if they could add repair depots that are only accessible by the team that are down seven tanks or down 8,000 HP? So the losing team can equalize their HP difference. But again, the enemies could simply camp the repair depots and it wouldn't be a good idea. So then I thought about frontline. What if the losing team could get a consumable perk that is based on your class? Let me paint a picture. For example, you are on Serene Coast in your highest tree over at the peninsula. You can't push forward because of the camping TDs and hold down heavies that are opposite you. Meanwhile, you see on the map that the west side has completely fallen and it's currently 0 to 7. The rest of your team is over where you are, and it's only a matter of time before you're shot from all sides. Suddenly, a reinforcements package arrives to all your alive teammates. The heavies get a group heal perk. The mediums get an inspire bonus. The artillery can get an airstrike. The light tank get a reconnaissance perk, similar to the one in frontline, where you fly a plane over a specific area and spot all the tanks and tank destroyers. 
And the tank destroyers can have a choice between smokescreen to allow them to support the heavies in peace, or an enhanced gun where their accuracy and reload decreases by 15%. To make it fair, the enemy team will know when the losing team has their consumables and when they use it, which will allow two things to happen. Either the enemy stay to fight the perked up allies, or they retreat, giving the losing team a chance to pull the score back. I understand this is quite a big change that people might not like, but I think it's worth a try since all these mechanics are already in the game and they just added a recon mission battle mode. This is the perfect place to test out new ideas. I already know Wargaming doesn't implement new game modes just for the fun of it. They do it to test new features. Remember when they tested no team damage in Frontline? Then they tested dynamic maps in the Mirni 13 mode. And then they tested the weather mechanic in the Las Waffentrager mode. Why not make a new mode called Pubs But Better and test out these ideas? So, to be completely honest, Wargaming most likely knows every single issue with this game and probably knows how to fix every problem there is. The thing is, if Wargaming continues to generate revenue from World of Tanks, they have no incentives to change anything. So what can we do to force them into fixing the game? Well, as my cute baboon friend said, hit them where it hurts, their wallets. Although I have no actual evidence to back this up, my suspicion is that Wargaming makes the most amount of money selling Christmas loot boxes. So my recommendation is to not boycott them completely. How could you? Their bastard marketing department made them too good of an offer to ignore. But instead, this Christmas, try to buy half the amount you would normally. Instead of spending $500, like someone did, instead spend $100. Did you buy $75 worth of boxes last Christmas? This time, spend only $25. Besides, if Wargaming thinks they can make big money by scamming us into buying the pissante, let's all let them know that we ain't buying it. Literally. Spread the word. We like to think we can't do anything. But remember, World of Tanks only exists because we allow it to. By paying them. Regardless, I hope this video was informative to you, and make sure to like and subscribe. This concludes my 5,300 word essay on why World of Tanks sucks. So yeah, kind of a bummer, eh? Well, I'm off for a wank, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and fuck off. <laughs>